Okay, we have here today a pretty interesting integral. This one's from the UK integration. It'll be 2023-24, problem six. We have the integral from zero to infinity, natural log a squared plus x squared over b squared plus x squared dx. Okay, I thought it was pretty interesting. This is, it looks pretty tricky having this much stuff going on inside the natural log. Also, oftentimes I don't really do problems like this where you know they don't specify exactly what this a and this b is right here. And they actually didn't put any conditions on the A and B. I actually did this myself over here. Just noticing I eliminated the A equal to B situation because if A equals B here, the whole thing becomes one. Natural log of one, zero. Integrating zero, it's just not that interesting. We could probably do it, but... And just notice over here, I eliminated the negative case for A and B just because we're squaring both these. So having the negative case doesn't really do anything because it's gonna be the same as the positive version. So now getting started with this, what I actually did wasn't anything particularly fancy. I just did integration by parts on this. We have, we do that a lot with natural log and what we can do in order to kind of have two functions, I can create a one there and we'll use the DI method or tabular integration over here to the right, just differentiating the whole natural log part. So we want to differentiate natural log a squared plus x squared over b squared plus x squared. And then we can just integrate this one right here. Now this is a pretty messy derivative, so I'm just gonna kind of tell you the answer to this, but what you do is you take the reciprocal of what's inside and then you'd have to work through taking the chain rule on this and then the quotient rule. And if you do all that, you'll get this mess right here. And then now we just need to integrate one. Integrating one is just gonna be x. So then we have part of our solution right here on the diagonal. We're gonna have x times, we're gonna have x times this natural log. And then everything here is gonna be an integral, but I'm gonna to try to rearrange this just a little bit. So first, this right here is actually a constant I can pull out front of the integral, and I'll distribute the minus sign in there, so then we're gonna have, if I distribute the minus in, I can write it as a plus, and then reverse the sign here and write this as a squared minus b squared. And then for everything else, what we'll do is, I'll multiply this x times this 2x, so we end up with 2x squared in the denominator over this stuff right here. But then let's just evaluate what we have this first part right here and see if we can get this part finished so first, when you evaluate it zero, you're gonna have a zero here on the x, and this is mostly gonna be just a constant term. So we can ignore the zero case. Now the infinity case is a little more tricky, so I wanna actually do the limit on that one, just because, notice here, if you plug infinity here, you're gonna have infinity for the x. Then this part here, the a squared and the b squared are gonna be insignificant compared to the x squared terms going to infinity. So this is gonna turn out to be natural log of one or just zero. So you have this indeterminate case, infinity times zero. So what I'll do for this limit is try to set it up for L'Hopital's rule. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna bring this x into the denominator, create this as a fraction and write this as one over x. And then we'll have this whole natural log in the numerator. And then notice now writing it this way, this is gonna be in the form zero over zero. So it's a good case where we can use L'Hopital's rule. We just need to take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. Now, thankfully, this would be more work, but I already did the derivative, so I'm just gonna use the derivative I found earlier here for this numerator. But then taking the derivative of one over x, that's just gonna be minus one over x squared, and then we can multiply this x squared into the numerator. But then from here, what we can do is really just focus on the dominant terms, the highest powers. And if I multiply the minus two x, times x squared, I can write this as minus two x cubed in the numerator. And here, if we distribute it out, we're gonna have four terms, but really all we care about is the highest power term, which is gonna be this x squared times x squared, or x to the fourth. Cancel three of these with three of these, and we just have minus two over x, plug in infinity, and this limit is going to zero. So for this whole first piece here, this is all going to zero, this is all going away, and we can now just focus on this integral here. Okay, so now just focusing on what we have left, really what we have here, I'm gonna to wanna to use partial fractions on this to break this up. Get one integral with that as the denominator, one integral with this as the denominator. So setting this up, we'll have this, we'll just write this fraction over here, exactly like we have it in the integral. So for this first fraction, we'll just take this part, we'll have this as a squared plus x squared. And then because we have a quadratic, we want a first degree polynomial in the numerator, so I'm gonna use big A x plus B. Hopefully there's no confusion between little a and big A. And then for the second part, we'll have our B squared plus X squared. And then I'll write this as CX plus D. 
And then from here, I'm just gonna do this out the long way and get a common denominator. So like here, I'll multiply by b squared plus x squared. And then here, I'll multiply by a squared plus x squared. So first, I'm just gonna actually take this right here and multiply it by this when we get the common denominator. In the end, we're gonna want it all equal to 2x squared. So what I'll do is just multiply this out, but I'm gonna do it in order because we're gonna want this organized. So we're gonna end up with ax cubed plus bx squared here plus ax times b squared, I'm gonna write that, a b squared x. Then for constant terms, b times little b squared is gonna be like this. I know it's kind of confusing to look at with all these extra constants in there, but doing the same exact kind of thing, multiplying cx plus d times this to get a common denominator. First, cx times x squared gives me cx cubed then for the square terms, we're gonna have d times x squared. Then next, then we're gonna have cx times a squared, so that's gonna be c a squared x. Then the constant terms is just gonna be d a squared. So now we have this lined up perfectly to add these two things together, because when we add the new numerators together, it should equal two x squared. So we can kind of create this like this as, like there's no x cubed term here, so I can write this as zero x cubed we have our 2x squared plus 0x plus 0. So first we can look at these ones, our a plus c terms. We have a plus, c, we're going to have here a plus c equals 0. And we don't quite know what that is yet, but then if we come over here, here we're saying a times b squared plus c a squared. Just looking at the constant parts, that's still going to equal 0. The only way this can be true for any b and any a is going to be the case when we have a equals 0 and c equal to zero. Next, we go on to here, bx squared plus dx squared equals 2x squared. So that just tells us that b plus d equals two. But at the same time, we need this also to be true, which is a little more complicated, where we have b times little b squared plus d a squared, and this needs to be equal to zero. Okay, from here, we wanna get an expression for both b and d, and it's more complicated than what we had going on here. First, we can take the first equation and rearrange it and get for b, b is gonna be equal to two minus d. Well, what I can do is take this and plug it into this equation. So when I do that, we're gonna have, plugging in right here, we're gonna have two minus d times b squared plus d a squared equals zero. Distributing this out here, we're gonna end up with two b squared minus d b squared plus d a squared equals zero. I can subtract two b squared on both sides, so on the right side we end up with two b squared. And then factoring a d out here, we get a squared minus b squared. Divide by a squared minus b squared on both sides, divide it here. Now we isolated our d, and then I can just use this minus sign to reverse the sign, so now we have this as b squared minus a squared. So we'll just make a note of this, our value for d is gonna be two b squared over b squared minus a squared. So now that we have a value for d, we can just use this equation over here to get a value for b. Now what I wanna do with this two is I wanna write it where I have a common denominator, so I'm gonna make my two like two b squared minus a squared over b squared minus a squared, right where this right here is just one, and then minus our d, which I'll just copy from here, two b squared over b squared minus a squared, now we have a common denominator, which is all gonna be over b squared minus a squared. But notice when we distribute in this two, two b squared minus two b squared is zero. That part goes away. And then we just have here, sorry, this is an a squared right here, I think. Yeah, that here's an a squared. And then we distribute in the two to the minus a squared, and we just get minus two a squared. And so this thing here is just gonna be our value for b. Okay, so now that we have our values over here to the right for a, b, c, and d, we have everything we need here and here. And what I'm gonna do is, going back to our integral, this is gonna allow me to break this into two integrals. One's gonna look like this, and one's gonna look like this. So let's just put this all together. So I'm gonna bring down this piece right here. So we're gonna have, we still have this constant value out front, but we're gonna have now two integrals here. They're both going from zero to infinity. The first one's gonna be this type, where we're gonna have a squared plus x squared here. Then for this ax plus b, well, the a value is zero, so the first part of it goes away and we just need our b. So our b is gonna be all, the trouble is look at how messy this is gonna be with the, the constant values like this. But anyway, for the second one, 
Now we're going from zero to infinity and we have this b squared plus x squared. And the numerator is gonna be just cx plus d, but c is zero, so we just have our d value, which is gonna be two b squared over b squared minus a squared. But now the way we can clean this up a little bit is just notice in both these cases, everything we have in the numerator is just a constant value that we can bring up front of the integral. And what I can do to set this up is let's take this minus sign and use it to reverse the sign here. So then now this is a squared minus b squared. I'm gonna actually force the same thing here. So I'm gonna create this as a squared minus b squared, but so I don't change it, I'm gonna make this a minus two b squared. And what that's gonna allow me to do is we have the same value here, a squared minus b squared. I bring it out front of the integral, but then factor it out of the whole thing. And then that's gonna cancel with what we have in front. Cancel here, cancel here. But then now we just have two easy integrals here that we know how to do. And what I'll do is in both cases, I'm gonna clean up the board, but let's bring these constant values out in front and then we go ahead and finish this off. Okay, now at this point, we really have the same integral in both cases, just a different constant, right? So it's gonna be the same formula. This is gonna be our arctan formula. So what we'll do for this, starting with the first one, we bring the constant out front. Our formula for this is gonna be one over the a value, arctan of x over a. So we're gonna have just one over a, arctan x over a. Second one, basically the same thing. We have the constant in front. This is gonna be one over this value now, one over b arctan of x over b. I'm gonna bring them all together, evaluate it together from zero to infinity. Before we do that, we can actually cancel an a with one of these and cancel a b with one of these. Then we'll go ahead and evaluate. First notice, when we evaluate at zero, arctan of zero in both these cases, that's gonna be zero. So I'm not gonna worry about the zero. We just need to evaluate an infinity. So putting this together, here we're gonna have two a arctan at infinity, that's gonna happen at pi over two, then minus two b here, arctan of infinity, same thing again, pi over two. Cancel twos here, here, and here, factor out a pi, and for my final solution is we just have a minus b times pi. Okay, so there you have it, kind of grueling with the partial fractions. There was kind of a lot of, um... okay, so there you have it, kind of grueling with the partial fractions. There was kind of just a lot of math. <laughs> okay, there you have it, pretty grueling with the partial fractions and all the steps, but in the end, it's a pretty satisfying solution. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.